Hello everyone and welcome to Chat UTD. This is my reaction to the weekend's result against Burnley and a little look ahead for the rest to the rest of the season and look at the bigger picture. As I feel like I said at the start of every every video, really, but it's all related to the bigger picture of the club. The draw yesterday is two more points dropped. It leaves us on fifty four points with twelve to play for, which means we could get a maximum of sixty six points. I've long since said that. I think Eric Ten Hag needs to get, or the team needs to get for him, 66, 67, 68 points. And you might think, well, where have, you, where have you plucked that from? Well, we got 31 points at the halfway point of the season. That's that's really poor. As it stands, we might struggle to double that. But the reason I've said 66, 67, 68 points might give him a, a, a stay of execution is because let's go 68 points. That means he would have accrued 37 points from the second half of the season, which means you've got momentum, which means you've had a really strong end to the season. 37 points is a decent points total. If we got 37 twice, we'd have 74 points, uh, which I think is what we got last season, um, 74 points or something similar to that. And, and everyone would say, that's about gets your third. So if you get 37 points in the second half of the season, you can say, look, we've got some momentum. We had a really poor start to the season, but look how much we've improved. And I think probably about a month or so ago, there was a possibility, albeit an outside chance, to do that. But it's just slipping away. Um, I say we can get a maximum of 66 now. I don't think that's going to happen. I did a preview of, of, of the rest of the season, the running, before the Bournemouth game. We've played three league games since then against Bournemouth, Sheffield United and Burnley. And we've picked up five points from those games. I optimistically said we could get 13 points from what was left. That's just not going to happen. And from the four games we've got left, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Newcastle and Brighton, I mean, just pick a number. I don't know. I genuinely don't know what to expect from those games. But we could end up, as I said, not even doubling what we did in the first half of the season. And that just isn't good enough. 31 points at the turn. We need eight more to make it 62 to match a really poor return in the first half of the season. It just, it's not good. Um, looking at yesterday, I would say it was just, it felt like an end of season game, really. I think United did all right. First 30 minutes we played well. We had some decisions go against us in the game. But, but as much as, yeah, United did all right, so did Burnley. Burnley created chances just like we did. It was, I don't think there's a lack of effort, but I, I look at the context here and it's the end of the season. The season's over and that does play a part in United's performances. What have we got to play for, really? Um, you, you, you could be shouting at your screen, well, pride would be a start. Yeah, that would be lovely. But this team, I don't think it's particularly motivated by just playing for pride. The point I'm making is I think if this, if, if we played... Burnley at home this time last season when we were fighting for third spot you know that you get that extra two or three percent motivation maybe not even might not even need to be two or three percent it could be one one and a half percent that just a little bit of added extra and in top class football that makes a massive difference that one or two percent and we are miles off it in terms of where we need to be but if you're one or two percent off it and you're not a particularly good team like United aren't then you get punished for that. And I believe they're not at that that level they need to be at. Even our top level isn't great, but we're not at the top of what we're able to do because, let's face it, they're fighting to, ha to hang on to a Europa League spot. It's quite an underwhelming thing. It's not, a, you know, it's not a great pull, I wouldn't have thought, for the players. So that 1% or 2% makes a big difference. Reminds me a little bit at the end of the the first season with Mourinho when he'd put all his eggs in the basket of the Europa League final because that qualified you for the Champions League and he unashamedly just basically wrote off the rest of the league season from about 10 league games to go, I'd say, maybe being a bit harsh, perhaps eight or eight, six games to go, whatever. And we saw some really poor performances. We saw some non-events where the team just turned up, played the game, didn't really look like they were interested. Other teams look far more motivated because we had that carrot at the end of the season hanging there for us in the in the Europa League final which was risky but obviously we won it and it worked 
as regards getting in the Champions League, we haven't got that carrot. We, we can't get in the Champions League, but we do have an FA Cup final at the end of the season. I think the feeling around the club, amongst the supporters, is let's just get just get the season out of the way and get to the cup final. And to be honest, some supporters are including the cup final in that and saying just get just get the whole thing out of the way. That's there's a, there's a kind of a an exasperated feel about the place. Looking at the bigger picture, um, there's a story I, I heard today that Jason Wilcox has been at training this week and he's doing some technical analysis of, of what the players are doing in training and obviously looking at Ten Hag and his coaching staff as well. It's a shame that the main person I'd like him to look at is injured at the moment because if his input at training is the same as his input uh, on the pitch, then um, I think he'd stand out like a sore thumb. So I think the fact, the fact that Rash was injured is probably good for him. That um, he's he, he'll probably just get away with it and, and he'll get another chance. Um, I don't need anyone to tell me what he does in training. I can see it on the pitch, and I hope that Ineos and those people close can see that as well. Um, the fact it's happening now, though, it's like the assessment process was supposed to be when they came in in January until now. So that then they can make decisions for the, fu the 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 future, as in for next season. They ain't got the people through the door. They've only just got Wilcox through the door. So doing this now basically means that next season is the assessment process. So next season, it's not a dead season, but it's it's just another season of fact finding. That's what it looks like. Um, we needed a full takeover, and you know. Qatar increasingly looks like it probably was a bit of a red herring and, and, and that's a shame because for a year or nearly a year I, I, I had my hopes pinned on, on something that probably didn't really exist by the sound of it and they led us up the garden path a little bit, they meaning the media, United, Qatar, whoever, I don't know who's to blame for that. But So not, I'm not necessarily talking about Qatar being the full takeover, we, just, we needed someone with money to come in and take the club properly on. To be free of debt, to be free of the Glazers, to be to be free of any association with this recent past that we've had, because this recent past that we've had has been so toxic and so bad. And the feeling around the club isn't one of excitement and optimism. We're still, we're going to be hugely hampered by FFP. The people that needed to be in the club now assessing things from January, like I just mentioned, are not here. So then the big clear out that we need to have probably won't happen. That will sort out FFP, really, if we if we get rid of all the players we need to get rid of. Then FFP won't be a massive problem, but it will be because we were, I don't think we're going to get rid of that many players. Um, so that's still a problem. Even beyond FFP, Jim Ratcliffe hasn't got loads and loads of money to give United with a cash injection. We are still, to some degree or other, beholden to the Glazers. They they are still the majority owners of the club. The debt is still there. The stadium is still in massive need of repair or knocking down and building again. The, the, in terms of taking a hit on players, if we again, if you have a, a full takeover, someone comes in and says, look, if we can get 20 million for Sancho, it's not great given the money that we spent, but that's almost, that's, that's past... It's collateral damage. It's from the past. Just, just get rid of him. Let's just we, we can we can take the hit because we probably prepared for that with the money that we've got, and 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 we just want to try and wipe the slate clean. Rashford's another one. How do you get rid of him? I want him gone, but he's on an astronomical contract that no one else is going to give him. United can't just write it off or supplement wages at another club. They they can't take. I don't think he's worth fifty million. I'm not joking, I'm not being facetious, he's not worth £50 million. Pounds. But they've just made him, they've, they've, they've strategically gone about making him their star boy. And they can't be seen to let him go for £40, £30 million, pounds, which is what he's worth. Because it, again, it's remnants of the, old, of the old regime, because the Glazers have, have not hit them directly, but they've given him that contract. So they'd be embarrassed to let him go for that money. Whereas a new take, uh, someone comes in with a, a full takeover and goes, I don't give a shit about what the Glazers did. He's off. He ain't worth anything to us, really. On, on the pitch, he doesn't do anything. So we need just to get rid of him. It's worth it. 
it's worth it to do that for the cultural damage that he's doing for staying in, in the team and in the club. And the, and the symbolic message it sends, as I've mentioned before, can't do that. So we're st we, that, I find myself saying that a lot when I'm thinking about what we can do moving forward. We can't do that. We can't do that because we're still hampered by, all the, by a lot of the same problems. Now, if Qatar or whoever bought the club in its entirety... In terms of the appointments that Ineos have made, I don't think it'd be that different. I, I think they probably would look at someone like Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth, um, Jason Wilcox, top operators, brilliant. I think they're, those are, they're really, really strong appointments. But you also then need to be able to be free to do what you want and get your vision moving in the right direction and do make all the decisions that you you need to be free to make. It feels like we're still hampered and we're still we're still driving with the handbrake partially on because we have to. We haven't got the freedom to make the decisions we need to make. We haven't even got the people through the door yet. So with all the work that needs to be done, the stuff that we are proposing or Ineos are proposing that they're going to do is not enough. If it was a perfect world scenario that everyone was in place, it still wouldn't be enough. But now we're hearing that the key appointments that they've they've made are not free to start work until the summer at, at the earliest and Ratcliffe said when he was interviewed last week at the London Marathon it means that it's taking a bit longer it means we, the fans are going to have to have patience I, I get it and and I understand but everything's been held back again and it just feels like the summer is going to be a watered down version of what we need so with a takeover what you get is let's say end of the season not having a good season but there's a there's a feeling of optimism in the air because we know next season, um, you know you you just completely blank slate. You start again, and we're really excited and we're looking forward to it. And I think that that um, that trickle down to the pitch. You know, better times around the corner. I don't think it feels like that. It doesn't feel like better times around the corner. And I mean, I, I don't just mean me personally. I mean the atmosphere around the club. It doesn't. I think there's apprehension. I think there's anxiety. I think there's scepticism. Um, and that's why we needed a full takeover. And in terms of looking at that, it would be brilliant if the last four games of the season we started to get some players back and we started to play some decent football. And again, just to get a bit of momentum, just to say the season's been crap, but look how strong we ended the season. But that needs to have already started, and it hasn't. We're just we're just making the same mistakes and we're doing the same stuff we've done all season, and it's not going to change, unfortunately. Um, and that's why I go back right to the start of the video. We need that. We needed to get into the late sixties because that would be indicative that we've had a really strong, positive end to the season where everybody's thinking, "Do you know what? We we might finish fifth or sixth, but there's something to there's something to grasp here. There's something to get hold of." And Ineos then in turn would probably say, "Actually, this guy's overseen a, a quality second half of the season. He deserves a chance." Um, I. I struggle to see a world where, where Ineos, as a brand new co-owner of a club who are making the football decisions, if we if we believe that, are going to look at Eric Ten Hag and say, yeah, he's the man for us. As a holding manager, whilst they're still finding everything out, yeah, maybe. I can see why they would probably think it's a bit easier to do that. But for all the fact that they've got Dan Ashworth, they haven't even got Dan Ashworth in, but they've got Dan Ashworth proposed to be the director of football. They've done the Emma Barada thing. They've got Jason Wilcox. These are all, you know, great moves and everything. Ineos are waiting, I think, or Ineos still need to, to make that one decision that the fans go, whoa. And, and I've said before, they're moving away from the manager's the main person. But as fans, we still think the manager's the main person. So I can't help but think they want their own person to represent them because that is the key role at the football club. In the future, that's going to change and they're trying to change that. But right now, in the hearts and minds of United fans, we're a club that's indoctrinated in thinking the manager's running the shop. Um, and I think they'll make a decision accordingly. I did my, um, my Gary Southgate video yesterday. Um, I've got a Thomas Tuchel one that I'm going to do. I've got a Zinedine Zidane one that I'm going to do. Um, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Eric Ten Hag when I do that. I don't dislike the guy. I'm not 
um, shouting from the rooftops, I want him out. Um, if he stayed, worse things have happened. But I think it's interesting to talk about prospective new managers and I think it's worth doing given the situation as it is. Um, and I like doing it. I think it's interesting looking at, at the options. Um, so so that I'll, I'll put another video out probably tomorrow. Um, Tuchel or Zidane, Zidane, because that's just much more exciting than Thomas Tuchel. Okay, Glazers out.